In today's video, I am considering how to move on from our past. So often we can get caught in patterns, judgments, fears that are linked to the experiences from our past. We can feel deep hurt in response to a specific event or a challenging environment that persisted over a period of time. We find ourselves in our day-to-day -day life repeating similar experiences, finding ourselves in similar environments and feeling limited by the past. And then often we just are not able to fully move on. Over the next few minutes, we will explore the power of the subconscious mind within to support us in letting go of the past. And to end, I will show you a key that I have used to engage my subconscious mind um, to work within to release my past. I'm going to be taking inspiration from two great authors who understood the subconscious mind deeply. They're Joseph Murphy and Florence Scovel Shin. Firstly, let's take some time to realign our thinking. I want to spend some time considering what it is about the past that holds us and support us in this realignment of our thinking about the impact of the past. So you may have had some difficult experiences growing up, childhood bullying, for example, um, or, or potentially neglect from parents or caregivers. You may have felt rejection from friends or had a bad accident that limited you physically for a prolonged period. All manner of events and circumstances may have occurred in your life. We often focus then on these events and circumstances. We'll say things like, if only that didn't happen. Um, but what is it that actually stays with us? It is not the event itself. It is the memory of the event. Um, and, and with that memory, we have a set of beliefs, our beliefs about the other people involved in the event. He didn't care about me. She was angry at me. And also beliefs about ourselves in relation to the memory. I got it wrong. I shouldn't have trusted them. I can do it better on my own. So I want us to recognize that we hold in our consciousness the memory of the past, our beliefs and judgments in relation to the memory. This forms, it molds our consciousness. And hence, in living our life today, we live from this consciousness and experience similar events, circumstances and limitations due to the consciousness that we have held onto, not the event itself. So it is the perceptions and judgments that we chose in response to the past, the story um, that we created of the memory that we store within that holds us and impacts us. The events of the past, they don't hold power over you, but rather you have focused the power of your consciousness on what you chose to believe about these events. So we need to first take this personal responsibility in forming our consciousness due to our response within to the events of the past. I'm not saying it's easy, but I encourage you to face up to this personal responsibility for the consciousness that you have formed within. I contend that all is within. Consciousness is the one reality. When we recognize this, we can then use the same power within to bring release and freedom in our consciousness. So consciousness holds us in the past, but also consciousness can release us from it. So we will turn now to Joseph Murphy. His book, The Power of the Subconscious Mind is incredible. It brings depth of understanding to this concept of consciousness that I've been discussing, but it also reveals the power of the subconscious mind to work powerfully in your life. Firstly, let's introduce the conscious and the subconscious minds. Here's a quote from Joseph Murphy. 
You have only one mind, but your mind possesses two distinct characteristics, the objective and the subjective, the conscious and the subconscious. He goes on, an excellent way to get acquainted with the two functions of your own mind is to look upon your mind as a garden. You are a gardener and you're planting seeds, thoughts in your subconscious mind all day long based on your habitual thinking. As you sow in your subconscious mind, so shall you reap in your body and environment. So you can plant seeds from your sub, from your conscious mind into your subconscious mind. Your subconscious does not judge what it is given. It simply receives it and uses its power to infuse what it is given. So it is often this interaction between the conscious and subconscious mind that we don't understand. Our subconscious mind is replaying and reenacting the messages that we have impressed upon it in the past. It is obediently using its power to enact and maintain what you planted within it. Subconscious mind is incredible. So let's just explore further with some quotes from Joseph Murphy about the subconscious mind and what it has for us to support us with releasing our past. Okay, so firstly, your subconscious mind is in touch with infinite life and boundless wisdom, and its impulses and ideas are always life forward. So the subconscious mind has wisdom. So often we consciously don't know what to do, but there's wisdom within. The subconscious reaches for life. As it can heal our physical body, seemingly miraculously it can also heal our mental and emotional being too if we know how to work with it again your subconscious speaks to you in intuitions impulses hunches intimations urges and ideas and it is always telling you to rise to transcend to grow advance adventure and move forward to greater heights wouldn't it be great to hear this encouragement, to let it permeate our consciousness and lead us higher in life? Another quote, if you are presented with a difficult situation and you cannot see your way clear, the best procedure is to assume that infinite intelligence within your subconscious mind knows all and sees all, has the answer and is revealing it to you now. So this is fantastic advice. Many people have a loop in their consciousness of, I don't know what to do. I've had it myself. They believe this wholeheartedly, but take a moment and challenge it. Your subconscious mind within knows all and sees all. It has the answer and is revealing it to you now. In consciously acknowledging this, you open your subconscious to release its power. So to get over your past, you need to work with consciousness and in particular, learn how to use your conscious mind to impress your subconscious mind to bring you ever upward to freedom. There is a lot to learn and explore in this area. I intend to do this from different angles and perspectives on this channel um, this year and beyond. So I guess I invite you to subscribe to continue this journey with me. So what is the key to impressing your subconscious mind to release your past? I want to leave you with this key that I learned from another metaphysical author, Florence Scovel Shin. I'm going to explain how I have used her method of casting the burden on the subconscious mind to support me in getting over my past. Florence Scovel Shin in her book, The Game of Life and How to Play It says this, when man knows his own powers and the workings of his mind, 
His great desire is to find an easy and quick way to impress the subconscious with good. Yes, we all want an easy way, as easy as possible. She continues as follows. I have found the easiest way is in casting the burden. Many passages in the Bible state that the battle is God's, not man's, and that man is always to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. We see, therefore, that man violates law if he carries a burden, and a burden is an adverse thought or condition, and this thought or condition has its root in the subconscious. It seems almost impossible to make any headway directing the subconscious from the conscious or reasoning mind, as the reasoning mind, the intellect, is limited in its conceptions and filled with doubts and fears. She goes on, how scientific it then is to cast the burden upon the superconscious mind or Christ within, where it is made light or dissolved into its native nothingness. So, like, don't be distracted by the religious terminology that she used, if, if that's not your thing. And if it is your thing, let it resonate in a potentially new way. So Scoville Shin is talking about the power within, not a God outside of you. Keep that fully in mind. She is encouraging us to cast the burden onto the subconscious mind. Let go of having to figure it all out. Let go of analyzing your next step to deal with your burden. Instead, give this burden to your subconscious mind. Give it permission to work on your behalf, to bring you to the freedom you are seeking. Okay, so what's the process for casting the burden? What is it that one should do to cast their burden? Number one, you form a phrase to cast the burden. This might seem really simple, but like, please go with it, please go with it. So the phrase might be, I cast this burden of lack or whatever on the Christ within, and I go free to have plenty or whatever it is you want to go to. The second point is that you repeat the phrase over and over. The statement should be made over and over and over, sometimes for hours at a time, silently or audibly, with quietness but determination. This is what Florence Scoblesian says. She continues, I have often compared it to winding up a victrola. We must wind ourselves up with spoken words. Um, so I think a victrola was some kind of old fashioned record player. Uh, that you needed to wind up to make it work. Um, so the, the, the third point is that you repeat this phrase until you recognize a clarity, a change in feeling within. She says, I've noticed in casting the burden, after a little while, one seems to see clearly. It is impossible to have clear vision while in the throes of doubt and fear. Okay. The fourth thing you do is you bring your faith to it. In order to impress the subconscious, active faith is always essential. So be childlike. Recognize that your mind has got you where you are and it will get you out. If only you work with it to do so. Take this step. For example, you know, cast your burden. Spend five minutes in the morning, five minutes at night, repeating your phrase. You might choose to spend an hour one night. Repeat it with intensity. Repeat it inwardly at other times. Other times, speak it out loud. I'm encouraging you to play with it. And also, just bring your emotion to it. Bring love, bring trust, bring excitement to this process. Repeat it. Allow it to sink in. And allow your subconscious to be impressed with what you want and with what it can support you in. So that's the process. Um, for me, I've often felt in my life that my past has held me back. 
Um, I've done therapy, I've read lots of books, done various healing techniques, um, all of which have their place. But I have seen breakthrough even more so through recognizing the power of my subconscious mind and choosing to work with it. I've also used this key of casting the burden. And since doing so, I've felt my life on an upward trajectory. Um, Insights have come to me. Simple conscious exercises have come my way that I have found support in. Encouragement in raising my consciousness has arisen. Um, So I'm going to spend some time in other videos giving more of this personal journey. Um, And I'll also look at other techniques and practices to impress the subconscious mind. But I want to leave you with the phrase that I developed for my own casting the burden. Um, It it might inspire you to create your own Um, and feel free to use it or tweak it or make make one that feels personal and true for you. It can be much shorter too. The key thing is the consciousness that you bring to it and the willingness and desire to impress your subconscious with it. Okay. Okay. Um, so yeah, here's, here's my phrase, um, that I have used and I still use from time to time just to impress further. Um, my phrase is the following. I cast the burden of my childhood, the untrue inharmonious beliefs that I identified with in relation to my experiences and in relation to men, women, my family and myself on the Christ within the divine, all-knowing, and life-redeeming subconscious power, and I step forth confidently and purposefully into my divine, rightful place in the world. I trust the divine power within to lead me on the perfect path to true freedom, love, abundance, right thinking, right relationships, and full, authentic self-expression. So that's it. It's great to share this with you. To this day, my subconscious continues to work with power on my behalf. I daily see its benefit in my life. I want to leave you just with the encouragement to cast the burden of your past on your subconscious mind within. Okay, take the time. Trust yourself. Allow your subconscious to be your support. So that's all for this video. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.